Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about another of the greatest of the Greek mathematicians, Apollonius. Apollonius of Perga was born around 262 BCE and lived to around 190 BCE. As with a lot of these uh, ancient mathematicians, we don't know exactly their dates. And in fact, um, it's, it's kind of a detective story trying to figure out these dates. In fact, a lot of the things they try to do is look at one references from one mathematician says about another one. Uh, if Then they know either they lived at the same time or, or at least the one they refer to lived earlier uh, and, and so forth. And so by, by looking at some of these different things, they can piece together some of these dates. Sometimes mathematicians will put a date on their work, but most often not. Um, and so, or they'll give a reference to a ruler who we know when, when they lived. So some of these dates are approximations, they're sort of best guesses. So if you know he lived around the uh, latter part of the third century, uh, and died maybe in the early second century BCE, that would be pretty good. Uh, Perga is in Greek Ionia, that's current day Turkey or Asia Minor. But he lived, worked, and died in Alexandria, Egypt. So really, uh, even though he, you know we can refer to him as Apollonius of Perga, really he was he was there in, in Alexandria, where many of the mathematicians of the day became uh, involved there. Uh, Apollonius was a common name, and other scholars had the same name. So uh, I read one source that was talking about uh, five or six different uh, people with the same name that did different things. But this mathematician, this is the one we're talking about. So it's a, another challenge in trying to pin down uh, what stories belong to which person. He had contemporary fame as an astronomer. But nowadays we consider him the great geometer and he's most famous now for his work on conic sections. So his work called Conics was uh, originally in eight books. Uh, the first four, we have copies in the original Greek, and the first seven, we have copies of uh, translations into Arabic. This is kind of a common theme that we're going to be seeing. Uh, the Arab mathematicians, after the Muslim expansion, were very big on preserving and copying earlier works from the Greek. And in many cases, that's the only way we have any surviving uh, material from them. Uh, so we owe a debt uh, not only to the Greeks for coming up with a lot of this stuff in the first case, but for the Arabs for um, you know copying that and keeping it going. The first four books are a more elementary in introduction and they a lot of that work contains stuff that was known earlier perhaps some things that were known as far back as Euclid or, or some of the time in between Euclid and Apollonius um, but oftentimes even that earlier work was sometimes fleshed out was fuller and more general results so there was definitely some original work woven in there books five to seven appear to be all completely original work and of course, we've lost book eight altogether, so we don't know what is in it, but we assume more original work there, too. Uh, this was a very influential book in the development of later mathematics. Uh, it introduced some terms that you're probably familiar with, parabola, ellipse, and hyperbola. These basic names of the conic sections were due to Apollonius. And so Apollonius... Uh, in his works here, talked about tangents and normal lines to conics. Um, he did constructive type proofs and things in the spirit of Euclid and of the spirit of the, the Greek geometers. But his constructions were much more advanced, especially than, than of those in um, the elements. It was a Greek geometric approach, but you can get modern equations um, for the conics directly out of his approach. So uh, even though he didn't use, certainly not, did not use modern notation, did not use modern uh, types of equations and so forth, 
uh, he was real close to that in one sense because of the way he set up these relationships. He's very close to the idea, some of these ideas uh, that we have later on. Uh, it's the most sophisticated work of ancient Greek mathematics. And it's very influential in the later development of mathematics, including calculus. There's a pretty important um, um, connection between the conic sections in calculus and studying some of the things that are happening in the conic sections actually help lead to some of the ideas in calculus later on. So a very important place historically for this work. Um, we have a couple of works that are uh, that we have um, existing, the conics, of course. And then there's another book called Cutting a Ratio, two books in that series that are survive in Arabic translation. There are references to a number of other works of Apollonius, but we have not, uh, they have not survived. Cutting an Area, two books there on determinate section, two books, Tangencies, two books, Plain Loki, uh, two books on Verging Constructions, two books, Quick Delivery, and on Burning Mirror. And at least two or three of these, Plain Loki and on Verging Constructions, uh, were known to Muslim geometers in the 10th century, even though we don't have them today. We know that they survived at least that long, at least in um, Arabic translations. So Apollonius was, uh, was a great uh, geometer, was a great mathematician, uh, second only really to Archimedes in that period of time in the sophistication of his work and conics being kind of one of the crowning achievements of uh, Greek mathematics from that time. So the towering figures of Archimedes and Apollonius were, uh, were, the, were the, they were the towering figures of that time period.